Hello everyone. So it's been a while, hasn't it? I think I should explain that first of all. Um, it's been three months or so since I've really talked about this outside of this the uh, Discord server. Um, so I'm, I'm yeah. Let me explain. So I don't know if I made this clear enough when I first talked about this project in my like review video and also the other devlogs. Is that this project isn't necessarily the highest priority the highest priority project that I have um, nor should it be um, I started this project just mostly for the learning experience for using unity which has helped a lot by the way as well as just for the fun of it um, I love tf2 and I do want this project to succeed however I'm not going to prioritize it over other things that I'm doing um, so my animation project's gonna take priority over this most of the time, as well as my other obligations as well that I can't talk too much about yet. So just be aware that whenever there's like a long uh, space of just silence, it's not because the project just died or whatever. Um, I'm always gonna have it in the back of my mind, uh, regardless of what I'm doing, because I, I do care about this project. I do want to see the best of it, uh, best what it can be. B best, I can't speak. Um, the best that it can be. It's simple words that I can't speak. So yeah, it's just the development process is going to be sporadic and activity and stuff. Um, obviously, the first two devlogs were within a week of each other, I think, or even a few days. Uh, and while this is like <laughs> many months, uh, it's just how it's going to have to be. Um, the more people I manage to bring in to help out with the project might help smooth that out a little bit. Just keep in mind that the people that I bring into the team to help out are also on that under that same obligation of not like being forced to commit too much time to this project. Um, I'm not going to force them or try to push them towards spending more time on this project project than they should, um, because everyone that is going to be helping out with this project is going to be doing so voluntarily. Um, they aren't getting paid for it, and I'm not getting paid for anything either. It's all just for the passion and love for the game. For those reasons, for many, many reasons, um, I, I don't want to be putting pressure on people I bring in uh, to work all the time. That's just not how this project is going to work. Um, and I don't think it's going to be good for the project either because I want this project to be purely passion driven. I think I'll give it the best results, even if it does take a while, um, rather than just trying to force something out, you know. Um, that's just how I see it. So I, I, I thought I'd just clarify that right off the bat, just how I am approaching this whole project and what to expect from it when it comes to updates and stuff. Sometimes we might get a whole month or so of work done. Maybe just once in a while, once every few months. Who knows? Um, it just depends on who we've got on the team and, of course, especially what my activity is like since I'm pretty much the project lead. So anyway, um, I did mention that uh, I, we have a team now. Yeah, we... There are some people on the team since last time, since the last devlog I've made. So I'm going to go ahead and summarize who they are real quick. The first person on the team I want to go over is Green Guy Gino. He is our programming generalist. Then we have Lewin. He is kind of our network lead programmer. Um, he's been doing a lot of work within uh, what's called Mirror, which is one of Unity's uh, like uh, third-party networking like add-ons and stuff. He's been working with Mirror to see if that is a possible solution we can use for networking. There is some progress. I will show some of that on screen. But of course, it's very rough. And of course, they aren't under any sort of obligation to commit all their time. Uh, Lewin is a fairly busy person, so I can't bug them too much. And of course, it'd also be nice to have anyone else that might be out there. Um, I'm not necessarily jobs or a volunteer seeking for someone else for networking just yet. But of course, if anyone happens to have knowledge on Unity networking or Mirror or maybe other other solutions that might work better for a game like this, uh, please do let us know. There's a Discord server in the description down below um, if you want to contact us or the team. Or contact me at, or the team. English. I can't do that today. Oh, man. Lewin has also been tackling the uh, the damage model for for this game. As you might know... TF2, the, like the base TF2 on the Source engine, is fairly much made of spaghetti. It's probably the best way to put it, because <laughs> let's just say the damage model just 
has so many rules and exceptions that are just plastered everywhere in the code base, and it's a mess. Um, Lewin has been trying to implement a system that's a lot more organized and still would work for a game like this. Um, so he's been making good progress there, and he's been also working on a lot of other uh, backend stuff. So yeah, Lewin's been doing a lot of work. So I don't don't want to push him. He's already done a lot for us. And then we have Uki. Or Yuki. I actually should probably ask how to pronounce that. It's either Uki or Yuki. Um, he joined in with Lewin as partners. Um, they worked on projects together already. So they are pretty good working together, I would say. Yuki has worked on the uh, the weapon system. Not the damage model, but actually like handling the, uh, the player inventory and the weapons they have. How the weapons should shoot, how they reload. And it's all throughout like the code base of the, the weapon system. Uh... And he's also been helping out with some of the networking stuff, though he's not the networking lead or anything. Um, he's mostly been doing the weapon system um, with a bit of networking help here and there. And then we have Blake, a more recent addition. Uh, he'll be helping out with some front-end programming, um, as well as... I guess front-end is kind of like um, making like men menus and stuff like that. Stuff that you um, can see in your face uh, in a game like this. The menus, stuff like that. Um, of course, he's fairly recent. We don't have anything to show in that regard just yet, though. So, And then we have Pattaya. I wasn't seeking for a volunteer to do VFX work yet. Uh, however, this person reached out to me and showed me their work, and it was quite exceptional. So I thought I might as well accept the offer. They wanted to help out, so I brought them into the team. They do some good work with VFX. Um, this also means that um, some of the VFX will be original. They won't be ripped straight from TF2. I think we'll probably use some like porting process to bring in some of the TF2 uh, particles and stuff. Uh, because I don't think we'll be making everything from scratch. That I don't know if that's really a viable thing we should be doing, but um, if we do need any sort of new VFX or fine VFX from the old game that could be made to look better, then Pattaya would be a good uh, person to look to uh, make something new. So yeah, that's the team that we have right now so far. Um, now I want to go over what job openings or volunteer openings, technically, they're not jobs. Uh, volunteer openings for some positions that we have that we could get filled up. The first position that we have open, and I'm sure there are plenty of people like this that are out there. It's just a matter of finding people that are willing to volunteer their time to help out a pro with a project like this. But uh, I would like to find a 3D modeler and texture artist to help out with some... Uh, model modifications that for models that already exist in the game um so for example uh most of the changes that i currently am planning to try to make is making model changes to a lot of weapons as i am the project uh, lead of course but i also am the animator for the project that's my main role mostly um like that's i'm willing to get some of these other roles filled out but i'm going to be the animator definitively so me as the animator I want to make the first person animations more um, interesting, more full of character without it being too distracting. Uh, but I do, in order to do that, I would like to uh, modify some of the weapons in the game that don't have the model pieces um, like separated properly. Like for example, um, for a pistol, you would have like a slide or an ejection chamber on the other side, or I guess in TF2 it's actually on the left side, but anyway. Um, <laughs> all those things, like the, the inside of the chamber of a gun or whatever, any other gun that ha that's in the game that has moving parts that it can't move because the model isn't developed enough, um, especially for like a lot, a lot of the unlockable guns in the game. Um, I would like to find a 3D model or and or texture artist. I'm not sure if I should probably find someone that does... Maybe 3D modeling and maybe another person that does texturing or maybe someone that does both. I feel like finding someone that can do both would probably be better, but it just depends on who we can find. Because obviously, whenever you make new parts of a gun that's not there before, you're going to have to texture that eventually. You can't just have it as like a solid color mesh or whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's something I would like to see get done at some point. And if there's anyone out there that would like to volunteer for that role, let me know. Uh... Discord server is down below again for any uh, one that's interested in contacting me or the scene. Uh, that's the place to go. Just to be sure when you contact me about the uh, 3D modeling thing, be sure to show me the work you've done previously because um, 
I'm going to be like as brutally honest as possible here. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I don't want to find someone that only does like an okay job or amateur job. I, I want to find someone that's actually good, you know. Um, someone that's already experienced and has, especially the experience like making things in like the workshop or whatever for TF2 uh, would be a great fit for us. Um, especially if it's stuff that actually made it into the game, you know. Finding someone like that would be great. That clearly would have enough skill set to fill in fill with some of the blanks that are in some of the weapon models in the game just to make them more movable. Um so, all right. I have two more roles. Uh, the second role is someone to help with project management. Not to be confused with project lead, um, because that's still my role and it's always going to be. But uh, especially when I'm not like around, when I'm busy, it'd be nice to have someone that would help make things more organized for the team, help manage the overall team and what they do, stuff like that. Um, because I, if I'm not around things probably might just stop progressing, you know, um, because I'm not able to oversee things as much. So having someone that will help oversee things, not necessarily lead, but help thing, keep things organized and keeping track of uh, everyone's progress, things like that. I'm not sure how I would be able to find someone that has experience in this and be able to tell if they do. I'm not sure. It's not the same thing as like the 3D modeling thing where I could just see the work they've done. Uh, like, I'm not going to lie, I'm not sure the best way to seek someone that would be able to do that, but ideally someone that has helped organize projects in the past, especially if it's within Unity, uh, so they, um, they are already familiar with that kind of environment. That'd be nice, of course, but that that might be a bit of a hard find. Um, but, of course, if you think you might be able to help out with that, and you have a way to show that you'd probably be a good fit for it, uh, be sure to, of course, contact me in the Discord server. Now, the final role that I'm looking for at this time, um, keep in mind that um, I, I will be looking for more uh, roles later on, probably. Uh, it's, this is just the roles that I need filling, like, right now, that I know I can make use of, like, now, pretty much. Um, of course, I think there's room for more roles later on. It's just I'm not going to bring someone on that I, don't, I can't give work to yet. So, uh, yeah, I'll worry about that later. But third role is someone that can help... Um, Making the game more optimized within Uni Unity itself, and for uh, for performance reasons, in a game engine like Unity, where it's very easy to develop for, it w it's also fairly easy to make the game kind of unoptimized performance-wise. Um, it's just the nature of the engine. Not necessarily because the engine's bad. It's just the game game making games for Unity is so easy that it's also really easy to make the game perform poorly. If that makes any sense. <laughs> um, I feel like I've done a decent job, but there's still some glaring holes in my approaches to making the game look the way it does. Uh, that's causing some impact of performance I'm not too happy about yet. Uh, so I would like to find someone that has experience within Unity making the games run better while still keeping the visual fidelity just about where it should be. <laughs> and also to uh, give some information on what kind of problems I might be having. Uh, so for those of you that want to contact me, uh, maybe you guys can help me answer some of these questions. And depending on how you answer these questions, I might bring you on to the team. Uh, but anyway, here are some examples of some things I'm not too happy about. So for example, um, the uh, first person model that you see on screen here has shadows on, right? You can see I uh, I can bring the, uh, the rocket launcher into shadow. However, the first person uh, view model is being rendered on a separate camera that is only rendering the gun and the arms. It's not rendering the uh, actual terrain. So normally that would cause the, uh, the shadow casters for these buildings here to uh, completely not work for the view model. The way I have solved this <laughs> is stupid, it works, but it's dumb, is uh, I've made a copy of the entire map and turned off rendering for that entire map except for shadow casting for the view models. Um, it is incredibly inefficient. It's stupid, but it works. Um, I'm not using a universal render pipeline or the HDRP thing. Uh, I'm using legacy. I'm using the legacy rendering pipeline, like the, the, old, the oldie, but the goodie kind of thing. Um, 
because both of those rendering pipelines have issues trying to emulate the TF2 style that I was not happy with. Uh, either they were too limiting, or they just weren't fitting the style that I was trying to go for with the TF2 look. Um, so, those rendering pipelines, I think, don't have this issue, because they have other methods of rendering uh, first-person view models that I would be able to use, but not available in Legacy. That That's one example. Another potential example is uh, dynamic lighting. Um, so, in a bunch of these small rooms in Badwater, I have these dynamic lights. So I'll, st I'll start with this. Um, this light here obviously is dynamic, but um, not every light in a uh, in Badwater is dynamic. There's, I think, most of these lights around here are. But uh, actually, let's go. Let's go over here. So you can see this light here doesn't cast a shadow, but this light over here should. Um, or is it up here? Yeah, up here. Um, so some of these lights I have set to baked, and some of these set to real time. Because obviously having too many real time lights that cast shadows is uh, pretty costly on performance. Or specific, I should say, uh, mixed. Uh, they they are in mixed rendering mode. They contribute to baked lighting in the light maps, but they uh, they can also uh, contribute to real time shadows and stuff. But uh, anyway, these uh, lights that are that are um, either mixed or real time. Also, I have set a, uh, a view distance where they start to fade away, depending on how far away they are. Obviously, I can have them cold out, but that doesn't always work um, in, in my case. It's hard to explain, I guess, but uh, the, uh, the most impactful performance uh, optimization I was able to make for these lights is to actually have these lights slowly fade out uh, based on distance. Um, let, I think there might be a good example somewhere I can show this. Okay, so you see this light here? And it's casting some light on this wall here. It's pretty subtle, but uh, as I walk further away, the uh, the cast distance for that spotlight, as well as the intensity of it, gradually decreases the farther you are, you are away. And as a result, the uh, the shorter cast distance decreases the amount of shadows um, it's casting, or sorry, the uh, it reduces the amount of objects it's casting light onto, uh, which increases performance. It's just that the main downside is, of course, the actual like bright spot of the light becomes less visible. But it does keep the the baked lights in the light maps on the walls and stuff. So it's not like getting too much darker. It's just like the uh, the more obvious direct uh, diffuse light from the light itself. Um, just an example. For many uh, lights in the, in this map, I have it set up to where there's actually two lights here. One is mixed and one is baked and. Uh, the original lights would have had a um, like a say a light value of like two or something. Um, if I were to split that into two lights, uh, one base light would have an intensity of one, and the other mixed light, uh, or did I say mixed first? But one mixed light would be at one, and one base light would be at one as well. So that adds up to two intensity. So it's still the same intensity as before, um, but uh, it allows the real time mixed light to fade away while still keeping some of that highlight. Of the uh, of the, the the light, the main light diffuse on the wall to still be there, even if the real time light isn't there, casting light there anymore. It's just that the main downside of that is it does still get darker, but you still end up seeing the light. Um, still, it's not like completely gone. And also, the other downside is the shadows that are cast on the floor is not as contrasty. Um, so, for example, if I were to cast my shadow here, you can see there's still a light spot uh, here and the dark spot here because there's still a baked light map here um, casting uh, light through just the baked light maps. Like, it's it's not real-time light. Half of it's baked and half of it's real-time. And only the real-time light is getting uh, caught off with the shadow while the baked light is still passing through because it's already predetermined it can't be changed. Um... I still kind of like this approach. I think it's a decent solution to uh, having too many like dynamic lights in the scene that's causing performance while still wanting to keep them on and casting real-time lights on the models uh, when appropriate. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird problem. Because <laughs> TF2 has a lot... In their maps, TF2 has a lot of lights in, in their maps. 
and I want to preserve a lot of that. Um, I don't want everything to be based because that, that's not going to look as great indoors because you can't... Unlike base TF2, um, the shadows that get cast has to be from a light source. It can't just be a default light direction that casts the shadow in, in, in a single direction all times regardless of where you are like in base TF2. Um, that's not as ideal. I, I'd rather use actual lights just for my vision of this re-stylization of the game, if that makes any sense. Um, anyway, if anyone has any ideas from that kind of stuff, let me know as well. And I might bring you on the team if you have some good ideas. And I guess the last thing I could touch on is the uh, the shaders that I'm using. Um, potentially there's room for optimization there. Uh, the shaders are coded using Amplify Shader Graph. If, of course, you have familiarity with that, that's also something that would be nice to have on the team, so I'm already familiar with that and I'm used to making shaders that are optimized and uh, don't have severe performance issues. Um, I do still want to keep the general look, but perhaps there's just room for optimization that I, I don't see because that's not my field of expertise. I can make a good-looking shader, but making it optimized, probably not my thing, maybe. Again, having another set of eyes to look at that kind of stuff would be nice. Oh yeah, I just noticed something too. Um, I actually knew about this already, but I forgot to mention it is uh, just check the frame rate. It's in the middle of the screen, like right next to Soldier near his uh, his belt. There's the frame rate. I get about 180 FPS in third person, but in first person, I get far less. Probably due to the uh, the first person shadow casters for the model, and as well as just the view model being in a different camera. There's probably a lot of overhead there. So yeah, that's, that's a thing that would be nice to find a solution to. It's not ideal right now. Performance is... There's room. There's room for it to be better. But yeah, I think that concludes that little part. Little uh, section. Segment. Thing. For uh, the volunteers seeking. And all the nerdy stuff out of the way. Um, next topic. And it's probably the most exciting t topic for most of you, I, I imagine. So, you may have noticed I have uh, two tips. Over there on the top of the screen. Um, and that's not just for me, because I obviously already know the hotkeys. Um, I want to, as sort of an apology uh, for everyone, ha having everyone wait so long for an update in, in, uh, in the public area of YouTube. <laughs> um, I want to release a preview build that people can try out and play. Um, wait. Don't go yet. Um, I want to clarify some things real quick. I, uh, this build that I'm releasing is an older build. Um, ever since I brought in these other people into the team, we've branched onto a, a different branch. Um, the build I'm going to be releasing is called the main branch. And the main branch is basically kind of how it was in Devlog 2, which has basically been mostly just my work, or I think mostly pretty much is it like it just is just my work for um porting the game over or not porting it just bringing the assets over and making the game in unity um that was basically when i was on my own and this other branch that's being worked on is called the network branch which has the networking assets as well as other further developments that aren't in this build yet uh like i've i've shown some preview and uh some preview videos on screen a few times throughout this video that has shown the networking branch. Um, the networking branch is fairly rough looking. It's not there yet. Another main reason I've been waiting so long to make this devlog is because there's just... It's been hard to find a way to present uh, the progress we've made when there's so much things that just look so rough right now. Because um, a lot of things, like in the back end, is getting reworked quite fundamentally to get it more in line with uh, with how the game should work for a networking environment, if that makes any sense. Um, and other fundamental systems, like the damage model I've mentioned before, the weapon system, things like that, is getting developed. But as a side effect, there has been other like visual bugs that has been introduced that would make the game look... It, it, it would make the build look visually worse than my branch that like my main branch because it's just so rough right now it, it would just make it look like a regression in progress when it's absolutely not the case 
Uh, I, I, I was just so worried about that that I just kept putting that off, but I feel like that's probably just not fair. So I decided to make this devlock anyway. Yeah, this main branch is uh is not including any of that stuff. It's just basically the build that I have in devlock 2, plus a few other features that I will show you in just a second. Um, so obviously, no multiplayer. And it's just the rocket launcher. The network build actually has a shotgun now, but... It, it, well, kind of. It has animations for it, but nothing's fully functional just yet. Uh, not even rocket jumping in the networking build is quite finished yet. It's still nowhere near as uh, close to TF2 as this build is. This build is far closer to base TF2 for rocket jumping because it's been further developed. While rocket jumping has had to basically be restarted in the networking branch, so it's a bit more rough. So one of the new features that was introduced into the player movement script is ramp sliding. Um, not everything... With TF2's like more advanced movements is in yet. There's no C tapping yet. Uh, I don't think they're they're speed pogoing yet. I think <laughs> um, I have to fully try to understand speed pogoing. I, that's something I don't quite fully understand yet. Uh, but it's been asked quite a bit, and it's like, oh, I should probably look into this. Um, that should be possible based on what I think I've heard about it. I do want to make sure about that though. But anyway, yep, C tapping, pogoing, or speed pogoing. Which means it's it's sort of like a bunny hop while rocket jumping, based on what I understand. That's not, that's not in yet. But ramp sliding's in. It wasn't in in the last build, but it is in now. It was actually quite simple. Basically, for ramp sliding to work, if you are going up an incline on the ground, and that incline is pushing you up at a vertical rate past a certain threshold, it's not going to put you on the ground. And that means that you just surf along that surface instead. Basically, that's just how it works in a nutshell. And that's just, it was as simple as that. Just adding that threshold and ramp sliding pretty much works. Minus a few other bugs I had to work out regarding uh, false positives and stuff like that. Or things not getting detected probably. But anyway, with that threshold in place, I was able to get the, uh, the ramp sliding to work pretty much how it should be in uh, base TF2. Like this. Which is, uh, which is neat. And if I were to execute that more uh, poorly, uh, it's not going to work. I can't get a bad ramp slide. I, I'm just, I've practiced this too much just to make sure it works. Ah, oh, how can I badly execute this? I just want to show that you have to actually be good at ramp sliding in this part of the map in order to actually do it. Ah, anyway, you get the idea. You can ramp slide. Um, so. Yeah, there you go. If you want to try out this build and like try to do some rollouts without some of the advanced tech like speed tapping, that's not in or speed pogoing. If you, other than that, uh, I am curious to see how people think about the movements for rocket jumping in the build because I think it's fairly close to TF2 and how it like feels naturally. It should feel pretty intuitive, minus a few other things that aren't quite there yet that I mentioned before. And perhaps um, I'm also especially curious to see people try to roll out like through the entire map and stuff like try to get from like the start of the map to the end of the map as fast as possible maybe do some speed runs i don't know something like that i i would be cool to see how how uh, people try to break the movements and see if they find other problems that i could probably try to fix and stuff like that um because other than animation uh i would say my other role is trying to make the player movement controller as close as tf2 as possible that's kind of been my job as well and it's probably going to continue to be because i'm fairly familiar with what the uh, the controller is in Unity right now to try to replicate the movement in Source. Um, I probably am still probably going to be the best person with the job for that. Having other people try to break it and experiment with it and stuff like that would be interesting to see. Of course, there are still some problems with it that, that I already still do know about. Like, um, you sometimes... I'm not going to press the space bar. But sometimes you just automatically jump when trying to go up a step. Um... That's not ideal. I'll probably figure that out eventually, but it's just a side effect to uh, trying to smoothly go up and down inclines. That's just a side effect of that. I, I gotta figure out a better solution for that. And of course, the uh, the player collision is still capsules. You still kind of slide down uh, ledges like this. Uh, you don't fall down immediately like you do in Source. You can still kind of float in the air because I, I still wanted to make sure you don't just immediately slip off an edge or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it, you're, we're still in capsules. I, I I can't figure out a way to get cylinders to work, unfortunately. Mesh colliders for a player controller 
limits or uh, has limitations for features that um, that are needed in order to get the the player controllers to detect collisions properly. Uh, it, it's just missing it. Uh, I it it's just out there. I don't know. That perhaps that someone so if someone else out there might have a potential solution for that. Uh, that'd be nice to know. A potential player controller setup that will um, allow the uh, the player to not slide off a uh, a ledge like that would be nice. Um, while still keeping the roundness of a capsule around the player instead of it being a box shape, like that that's that would be the most ideal solution. I would go with that solution if that was available to me, but I don't. So I'm going with capsules for now still. Uh, so that will affect some of the movements as well, but I don't think it's as major as people might fear, but it's there. Uh, it is a very, pretty significant difference in collision, obviously. And if I had the choice for cylinders, I would do that. But yeah, anyway. Uh, the other features that I have here that are on the top of the screen uh, as follows. The Z, the Z, X, and C keys give you the voice command wheel. I actually kind of broke this when I built this uh, uh, build. I, I, I completely forgot to bring back the cursor that allows you to select these. I, I'll fix that once I release it. But uh, yeah, the wheel is here. I have not... I will bring the legacy voice command menu back. Um, I don't think I was originally planning on doing that, but uh, I've seen plenty of people that still want it, and I think I will gladly keep that legacy menu there as an option for those that still want to use the legacy like menu that you could just press one button and then another button to say a voice command without the uh, the voice command menu taking up your screen and also locking your cursor, which means locking your aim. Of course, that's not working right now. I I, I broke that. That will fix that by the time I release the uh, the build. Um, and then we have Q, which means you can either just suicide and also just revive where you were when you died. So whenever you end up just damaging yourself too much with the rocket and dying, you can just revive yourself back to where you were. No big deal. Pressing V will put the view model down lower and out of the way for those that would like the uh, the 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 view model bob to not be as distracting. So yeah, that's an option for you guys if you want a less obtrusive or intrusive uh, view model. Of course, the minus key on the keyboard can talk you in and out of first person. And also the number keys above your uh, keyboard, not the number bat, not the uh, not the numpad keys, but just the normal num number keys above your normal keyboard can toggle through uh, graphic settings. Um, I don't have a pause menu or anything yet, so I just resorted to having hotkeys to toggle through preset uh, graphic settings. So one being the lowest possible graphic settings, therefore being the best on performance. And six being the highest. Yeah, I guess that's it. Down the link for this little preview demo of this uh, project, you can download that in the description if you want to try it out. And let me know how, what you guys think. I, I think I'll make a channel for it in the Discord server, just specifically just to talk about this build. Share your videos on it if you find anything weird, any bugs to report, and want to show off your speed run of going across bad water, whatever it is. Uh, I think that'd be a good place for that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm curious how that will how go. So, yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I am still fairly busy. I am making this video now during my weekend off, but... Yeah, I am still very busy, so I'm not going to be able to work on this too much still at this time. But keep in mind, this is still very much on my mind. It is definitely one of my top projects I want to put time to, but of course I still have other projects that I do want to keep more uh, prioritized. Uh, but, yeah. I will see you guys later. Thank you for watching.